It looks like each one of these is a possible landing spot. The little golden notches. Let's check out each one of them before we go to the aisle. The Lost Land. Good godly gear. Takes a look inside. Sharon learns how to make sacrosanct sta staves and Venus tears. Oh, that reminds me. There was a quest I had to do in Galapolis. We'll do that too. As soon as we finish checking this place out. Probably cannot go in. That's fine. The door is tightly shut. It doesn't appear to have a keyhole, but there is a curiously shaped indentation in its center. We saw this indentation a minute ago. We must give thanks to our savior! My fellow Galapolitans, pray listen! Erdwin's lantern was destroyed by a great savior. He appeared as though from thin air and sliced the enormous star clean in two. We owe him our very existence. We must let him know that we are grateful. Come, let us thank him together. He is most handsome, I'm sure. Apparently the savior, with no regard for at all for his personal safety, was able to cleave Erdwin's lantern clean in two. A truly incredible feat. Though, of course, a single act of courage is nothing when compared to Prince Ferris's lifetime of heroism and daring do. You must pray, please. Come, let us offer up a prayer of thanks to our savior who came to the aid of Galapolis in his hour of need. For he is capable of destroying Erdwin's lantern. He must surely be capable also of defeating the Lord of Shadows. Prince Ferris certainly believes so. The savior person does sound rather wonderful. He actually cut the star in two? The savior is my new hero. Many of us fled to the western checkpoint, but now the threat of the lantern looms no longer. We have returned home to the city. By the sand, this is good to be home. We saw so many monsters on our journey. I truly did fear the worst at times. We ran away from Galapolis because of that star, but then it disappeared, and we were able to come home. Now we could all live here together forever. I never need to say goodbye to anyone ever again. Hmm, there's no better food in all the world. I'm never leaving Galapolis again. My mother makes the best food in all of Erdrea. My family and I fled the city like so many others, and upon our return, we found a most disagreeable man in our house. He appeared to have taken up residence here. Naturally, I chased him away at once, but it was still the most disturbing experience. Mr. Luminary, sir. Please defeat the Lord of Shadows. Make us happy once more. A thousand pardons, my dear. You must have been so terribly worried. I've caused you so much trouble, my love. But fear not, I am home for good now. We are family once more. 
And you are well, yes? You are not hurt? Oh, I've been so worried about you. Wanderers no more. The Galapolitan Circus. I was gone a long time, off fighting monsters. It's such a joy to be home once more. Finally, a place where my heart can be still. His mission in the desert appears to have changed my husband. Before, he was rather cold towards me, but now he displays moments of great kindness. My father has returned. My father went out to fight monsters, but now he has come home, and his horsey too. This is the most happy day for me. This is the last house, otherwise like the palace and other buildings that I didn't think of as houses. My family have been loyal Galapagos and subjects for generations. Indeed, this house was given to us by a former sultan in recognition of the contribution we have made to the kingdom. I cannot tell you how relieved I was when I realized it would not be crushed by a falling star after all. This must be it. Not only is this a chick different, but there's all those trophies on the wall. The lady of this house is a keen collector of classic literature. As her butler, it often falls to me to do the collecting on her behalf. Many years ago, she dispatched me to Arborea to pick up a particularly rare volume. At the time, I was aggrieved to be sent on such an arduous journey, but looking back now, it's quite the adventure. What became of that book, you ask? I'm afraid that we no longer have it. A traveling woodcutter who once stayed here took it with him when he left. He was so enthralled by its contents that my lady reluctantly agreed to part with it. It was the only way to make him leave. If I remember correctly, he said that he was on his way to a cabin in the Mango Grove. Whether he still resides there now, I do not know. There's a distinctly old-fashioned looking history book entitled The Guardians of the Star. Tran takes it from the shelf and has a closer look. Whatever could have led people to brave the harsh desert heat and make their homes in the arid land of Galapagos? To answer this question, you must go back to the very founding of the nation. What records remain of the Galad men who first settled here refer to them as the Guardians of the Star? It is safe to surmise that their descendants went on to become the current royal family of Galapagos. We cannot know for sure how these first men came to earn such a title, but more than a few have speculated upon a link with the nation's renowned knights and the numerous checkpoints they guard. I hear you're on a quest to defeat the Lord of Shadows. I did not expect even one as brave as you to go after such a formidable foe. There's little I can offer you by way of advice, but I will say this. A hard run race or two will do wonders for your confidence. Only if there are surprises in it for me. There are no races held at night. Even horses must sleep, you know. Oh, alright. Well, we'll come back some other time and deal with, whoops, deal with it. Uh, Mango Grove. And there are some other books I couldn't read that was near, um, Phenomenon. Passage of countless years has taken its toll and reduces ancient tome to little more than a faded cover around some tattered scraps of paper and thread. But wait! There's a letter, worn and faded, but still legible, hidden inside. Looks like the rest of the message that the Minstrel and Arborea mentioned. Jaren takes a closer look. But wherefore must it be so? The world may be unchanged, as beauteous as it ever was, but without thee all seemeth grey and muted. My chest is fit to burst. My dearest Erdwin, each new day I must endure without thee, pierceth my heart like a dagger. I can do not but cling vainly to the hope that one day we might be reunited at last. Until then, my songs are thine and thine alone. I pray that they may reach thee, wherever thou might be. That song Serenica sang, is it? Is it this? I don't know. You've read the second page of the letter that the minstrel told you about. You should head back to Arbor and tell him what it said. Ah, you have returned. Well, did you find the second page of the letter? Nope. What a pity. Pray do not end your search yet. I cannot rest until I know how the missive ends. Tran hands over the second page of the letter. 
Yes, this is it. Pray, allow me to read both parts together. <clears throat> Dost thou recall, my love, when we two did gaze upon the beauty of all Erdrea? The sky so deep and blue did seem to like to swallow us whole. The sea burned matter red, stained by the light of the setting sun. And all around us, Yggdrasil's leaves did shine with the light of life. The heavenly vision I saw with thee that day seared itself into my very soul. Never shall I forget it, though I live for all eternity. But wherefore must it be so? The world may be unchanged, as beauteous as ever it was. But without thee, all seemeth gray and muted. My chest is fit to burst. My dearest Erdu, when each new day I must endure without thee, pierceth my heart like a dagger. I can do naught but cling vainly to the hope that one day we might be reunited at last. Until then, my songs are thine and thine alone. I pray that they may reach thee, wherever thou might be. My word! Such passion in that name Erdwin! Could it be that this letter is addressed to the Luminary of Legend? Of course. The tales tell of the star-crossed romance between mighty Erdwin and the great sage Serenica. This can only be a love letter from Serenica herself. What an honor it is to read such heartfelt words with the pen of one so illustrious. One feels as if one is witnessing the glory of the Age of Heroes firsthand. Pray take this. It is but a token of the gratitude I feel for your having allowed me to read these beautiful words at long, long last. Things to do with Metal Goo. Love letter from the Age of Heroes. Ah, I could not have dreamed of anything more romantic than this. I'm brimming with ideas for a new song on the subject of Erwin and Serenica's love, and it's all thanks to you. You delivered the rest of the love letter to the minstrel in Arbora. It turned out to have been written by none other than Serenica herself, and was addressed to her beloved Erdwin. Sadly, it was destined never to be delivered. Ah, how romantic. Love letter from the Age of Heroes. Ah, I could not have dreamed of anything more romantic than this. Holy powers watch over you. Alright, um... Do I actually have to go to... I can just do it anywhere, that's good. Alright, where else? Let's try the Northwest. Land at the Sniffleheim Whaleway Station. Album of Imperial Attire. Emperor's Attire and Empress Robes. Anything else? Alright, let's go ahead and... I mean, I would have thought I would spawn on the top left of the map when I summoned the... Oh, I guess I'm spawning from the Luminary's Landing. Okay. Mangle Grove Whaleway Station.
All right, uh, I, I see where I'm supposed to go. I can I can see that, but I I want to check out all these other spots first. So we'll go southeast. Champ Sauvage Way Station. And I'll probably just have to come back to all these when I get the key, which I'm assuming I'm going to get the key at that island area. I'm I'm assuming that's what's going to happen. Is I'm going to I'm going to go to all these places. Then I'm going to go proceed on with the story, and then they're going to give me the key, and then I'm going to come back. That's what I'm assuming is going to happen. Okay, so we'll go southwest now. Oh, we've done that one.
Laguna di Gandolia. But I'm getting good ingredients out of this. I found a recipe book. This is all stuff I might be able to make use of before the island expedition. Mysterious energy emanates from the seedling. It feels similar to the energy given off by the egg roots, but nothing happens when you touch it. Was a root in the last bastion. I don't remember if if I was able to interact with it or if the character lost his memory root powers by that point. Curious energy that once emanated from the plant can no longer be felt. Alright. Okay, I guess there's not much else to do here. Hmm. Yeah, let's check out that little island next to Laguna. I know there's no golden light next to it, so I might not be able to interact with it at all. Dismount Cetacea at the battleground. Okay. Guess I could also do the um, trial. This mysterious object looks almost like some kind of giant candlestick. A foreboding fog hangs over the entire area. It doesn't seem like a good idea to proceed any further. <laughs> well, this place is strange, all right, but I wouldn't they call it beautiful. This can't be the island Father Benedictus was talking about. We'll not find the power we're after around here, laddie. Let's hop back onto Cetacean and try our luck somewhere else. People have obviously been up here before, but how do they manage it? Traveling to islands floating in the sky isn't something just anyone can do. Oh my! Honey, this place is enormous. It's like a whole mountain's ended up in the sky. One day someone will have to explain to me how places like this in Yggdrasil manage to float. Ugh, what's with this fog? It's stopping my will to live. There's no way we can keep going through this. Hmm. The fog that covers this place is a malign energy that will drain our spirits if we stay here too long. We need to stay away until we can come up with a way to clear it. Could it be? How strange. This island is enormous, and yet it is completely invisible from the ground below. How in the world has it remained hidden? Okay, there is areas to the north, east, southeast. Take a wide berth.
So one behind me and one in front. Let's get the one behind me. There was, let's see here, one of those like that at the Angra La area. We'll do that in a second. Can we race yet? So I guess this episode will be a mishmash of like re-exploration of some of the world aspects, not like flying around. Okay, nothing new. Okay, we will now... The southeast ones. Okay, so if I come back here, maybe it'll let me fly from this area. We'll try that in a minute. Yeah, that's everything here. Alright, let's try running back and see if 
if... I assume that's what it will take to resume traveling from where I landed. Yeah, okay. Southern auto step. Kill him one more time. This is an odd monster. I have not I don't think I've seen anything like this in the game so far. Or in any Dragon Quest game. Unless he's by himself. But he's strangely weak. Thank goodness. One more way station, then we'll make our way to the island we're not supposed to go to, and then the island we are supposed to go to.
Okay, let me think here. I guess we'll do the Ingra Law thing real fast. See if there's any other unlocks I can do. Well, well, a mere seven moves. A praiseworthy effort indeed. Not that we would expect any less of the Luminary. In recognition of your having achieved victory with eight actions or fewer, I hereby present you with this award. Okay, let's take a look at the Sage's Robe. Okay. Okay, let's take a look. Fit to beat the band, the major leagues, fee fi fo fur. Sounds like a group. That. Solo against the group, maybe, and... That took a lot of moves. Okay, one more move. Yes! Recognition of your first successful completion of second trial, allow me to present you with this reward.
A mere 10 moves. Dragon Dojo Duds and Rogue Robes. Let's see here, this will increase my deafness. Sure. And Dragon Dojo Duds. Maybe Jade. Okay, she gets more defense, but that's about it. Like, I have no idea what I'm facing, I just have to guess. Was that four moves? Oh, don't heal, just hit him. That's, this is gonna be like 12 moves now. I know, I know, I can take command of the battle. That's tw Yeah, that's 12 actions, alright, so I gotta kill this group in 3 if I want the best reward. Wait, there's, there's even one after this. We can't all be Tran, apparently. <laughs> actions. Forgive me, Luminary, but preparing more challenging trials is beyond my capabilities. Were Grandmaster Pang still with us, we could offer you the honor of undertaking the final trial, but alas, all I can offer are my apologies. Should you ever wish to attempt the Wheel of Harm again, you need only ask. So I need to... 
I don't think I can do that right now. Like, that's that's a good five moves away. So, let's take a look. What did, what did I get again? Beastmaster Claws, okay. I don't, I don't think I've ever had a character use Claws, though. And... Bon Bon Baton, that's it. Okay. Alright, that's all the random side questing. Let's go check out this the island I'm not supposed to go to, and then... Okay, that didn't work. I wasn't expecting it to. An oppressive barrier surrounds the fortress of fear. It's not possible to get any closer. 